Joining us now is Rami Rahim, the CEO of Juniper Networks. Uh, Rami, good to see you. Uh, it's been a, a little while. So th this is an important conversation we're having here because I've seen some skepticism on the street about how this acquisition will pay off. Some analysts had expected HPE would return cash to shareholders, but here they are going for growth, buying Juniper. So tell me, in AI... How does this shift, particularly the cost equation, because costs are, are important in this uh, economy, it, are you replacing network managers with this AI? Are you able to run a network more efficiently? Yeah, th first of all, thanks for having me on, John. You know, we're basically taking a page out of the success that we've already seen at Juniper in the campus and branch with our AI native platform and expanding it to include all the different, different layers of the network, including campus and branch, data center, and wide area networking. In so doing, we're adding tremendous value for our customers by essentially enabling, enabling them to focus on what's important, which is digital transformation and innovation versus keeping the lights on, keeping the network up. We're essentially enabling this through the use of AI and we're doing it better than anybody else in the world right now. So Rami, what kind of go-to-market is necessary here? It just seems to me like this works best at scale because uh, AI requires a certain amount of data center resources. It runs hot, generally speaking. And if you're going to run this, better if you're running it across a huge amount of resources. Some of the customers, I imagine, who would benefit from this are smaller. So how do you get it to them in a way that uh, leads to ROI? So the success that we've already been enjoying in our AI-driven business, and I should mention that our last two reported quarters, we saw our AI-driven networking capabilities grow revenue at, at roughly 100% year over year. The only thing that's holding us back is go-to-market scale, the ability to get this into more of our customers' hands worldwide. We've been investing in go-to-market and seeing the returns of that investment. You mentioned the pending HPE acquisition. One of the benefits of this acquisition is, in fact, we will have more of a worldwide presence, more of an international channel that will enable us to get this technology into, our, into the hands of more and more customers worldwide. Not to mention the end-to-end -end solutions and capabilities that we can build together as a single company to fulfill all aspects of building AI cluster networking data centers, which is a huge, huge opportunity that's around us today. Are there challenges to international expansion? I mean, granted, of course, uh, under the scenario, should uh, the, the HPE acquisition go through, they got to figure out how to sell what you've got uh, that you've been doing so, so well with. So that, that's a process. But outside of that, when you're talking AI in markets outside of the core, what are the challenges? Well, I honestly see more opportunities than challenges right now. Uh, we've already proven that AI is, uh, has high degree of demand worldwide. This is not a, a, a technology or an architecture that customers only in the U.S. want. We have seen success in parts of Asia Pacific, in Europe, and the only thing that we need to do at this point is to get it into the hands of more and more of our customers. The demand is absolutely there. Um, we are doing this through organic growth. And of course, I think we have the ability to accelerate this with a proposed combination with the HPE.